let's start the webinar i think uh, most of us are having it um, so we will join us so i'll just start by sharing my screen yeah so so what i'll do is so basically i'm going to give in about how to do survey and map all the uses you can use with Mission Planner. Um, so a little bit about me. So I've been doing this since 2010 when I joined the RG Pilot development team. Um, I've been doing it. I had my own job for a fair bit of it and was doing it after hours, but currently I work for Cube Pilot. Um, so they uh, help fund mission planner development and other projects which are autopilot related. So it's it's quite good. So um, that's about me. So what would what I'll do is I plan on doing uh, live demonstrations of everything that I plan to show today. So um, if you have any questions, you can ask me probably towards the end um, and yeah we can go from there so I'm just going to share my screen okay so now that, that uh, can someone confirm that my screen is working uh, yes we are able to see your screen yep okay so the first thing we're going to do is so um, I'll just load up my copy of Mission Planner. Okay. So um, so the first thing we got to do is for all this uh, everything I'm going to show you today, I'm going to use the simulation tab and Sittle. So the like for any kind of testing that you want to do to try out different types of missions or um, the way the aircraft will respond, whether it be a coin, it, there's a plenty of good ways to test using the simulation. So what we'll do is I'm going to start with a multi-rotor and basically just uh, use that to do all the demonstrations today. So I just start that up now. Okay, so um, the trick with SITL or loop simulation is that it always uses the current master. So all the features that are available in the current, the newer than the current release of Alert are available in this SITL instance. So as you can see here, it's starting in right in my backyard at the moment. All of this information about uh, how high it is, how fast it's going, the ID of the vehicle. So if you had more than connected to more than one drone, um, the number of the current h -top and the current battery level of this virtual drone. So um, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll get straight into how we would use this for survey and mapping. So let's, let's pretend that you already had the camera set up on the drone. So if, if you had, if you needed to do the camera set up, would set it up in the hardware screen uh, and like you'd set it up under the gimbal screen. And so the most common thing in here is depending if you have it on a gimbal or have it hard mounted to the bottom, um, probably the most important thing in here is this shutter option down here. So this, this shutter option controls how you would be triggered to actually take a photo. Um, I would suggest uh, visiting the RG Pilot documentation for further information on how your specific fix it up. So whether it be a servo controlling it, whether it be a relay or transistor, there is quite a few. So as an example, if I pick say servo nine, um, we've got the servo limits min and max uh, and basically when it's pushed, when it's not pushed and how long it should push it. These are all just options um, which really depend on your setup and your drone. So um, at this point in time, I'll just switch that back just because uh, for a test, it doesn't actually matter. But if you were doing this 
in real life, that would matter a lot. Um, and if obviously if you had a gimbal as well, you could uh, like a pitch and roll stabilized gimbal as well. So that's um, pretty much it for that part. So a drone is currently landed. Um, it's ready to. Fl it's pretty much ready to arm and take off. The camera gimbal is set up. So um, what we'll do is now plan a mission. So Mission Planner supports actually four different types of grid generation. Uh, so there, the main one standard grid, uh, corridor, a uh, spiral, and uh, one from someone uh, else from a different company, this map. So the grid, corridor and spiral are all for top-down approaches. So their typical uses are, so for a grid would normally be um, photography uh, of an uh, area, say, say this, this entire property here, you could do the grid over that. Um, corridor, if you say, if you wanted to do a road, so you would fly the entire road to do survey, to do a river, a road, a power line, a pipeline, uh, that type of thing. And the last one is spiral. And what spiral is for is, uh, spiral is more for a lawn mowing pattern. So if you were to, it would fly around trying to carry it inside the polygon. So um, I, I will show each one of these. Um, they all have their different purpose. And the very last one, which isn't, is slightly different face map. So if you had a cliff face and you wanted to take photos of that cliff face, this is where you would use face map. Um, so we'll, we'll go through and we'll see how it looks. So. The first thing I'm going to do here is I need to draw a polygon. So we've already connected all, as I said before, gimbal's all set up, camera's all set up. So what we're going to do is I'll click this button over here and we'll draw a polygon. So what I'm going to do is at the moment, say I want to do this property. So I'm going to click this fence here. I'm going to click it over here and here, here and here. So we've got a polygon. Um, so that's, so let's go. So I'll right click here, go to auto waypoint and go to, um, survey grid V2. Oops, sorry. Survey grid if I want. So that loads this interface here. So, um, this interface is designed mainly for, so to take photos, aerial photography. So I'll just make this full screen. So it's nice and big and zoom in a little. So the first thing you would normally do in this screen is camera. So in this case, let's, I'm just gonna pick a 6,000. Uh, no real reason for that other than it's easy. Um, so the altitude, the altitude is what height um, the quad is going to fly at to take these photos. So probably the biggest thing with our controls how often you need to take photos. Um, if I decrease the height, you can see that it gets a lot more. Um, I'll just turn internals off for a second. And if I decrease, you can see that I can do it in a lot less. Now, what you will also notice if you look down here on the bottom, um, you'll see the field ground resolution, T centimeters. So if I, as I go higher, you'll see it get worse. Oh, sorry, not 80 centimetres, 0.8 of a centimetre. So we're at 2.16 centimetres now at 111 metres. And if I go all the way down, say at, at, at 30 metres in a quad, so we'll get 0.6 centimetre ground resolution. So each pixel on the camera would actually be 0.6 of a centimetre resolution. So a couple of the other stats here are the total area would cover, so 3,400 square metres. Uh, so total distance is half a car. Distance between images is seven metres. So the reason why these numbers are important is not all cameras can take photos 
continuously. There is a limit to how quickly they can write to the SD card and other things like that. So probably the biggest number to look here is the photo every estimate. Currently it's at 1.45 seconds. So what this is saying is if you were, and if I look over here, the flying speed at the moment is at five meters per second. If you were flying at five meters per second, it would be taking a photo every 1.45 seconds. So if I decrease that time, you'll see that the photo every goes up. So if I fly at two meters a second, it's gonna take a photo every six seconds. So it's important to control this, to um, control how quickly you can take photos. Um, most cameras take photo maybe in one second or less than one second, but because obviously we're going to be taking uh, 43 photos in this situation at 3.6 seconds apart, we need to make sure that the camera is actually capable of doing that. So one of the other important fields here is the minimum shutter speed. So I'm going to increase the speed back to 5 metres per second, and you'll notice that the minimum shutter speed is now 1,666. 1, so um, it's important, so th this is a recommendation on the minimum shutter speed you should have. Uh, obviously faster than that is perfectly fine. And what this field is based on your flying speed will actually determine how much motion blur the photo will actually have. So if, if you try to actually shutter speed uh, faster than the number quoted here, um, that will basically decrease the chance of motion blur. Anything below this number and you start into pixel motion blur, um, which of course means a worse final result in the orthophoto or the digital elevation model. Um, one of the other things here, ground elevation, 36 to 42 metres. So what this is saying is that there is six metres of height difference we say uh, one end to the other end um, it's it's actually an average so it's just telling you so as an example if I change my altitude to five meters that would be a bad option here because if I were to take off a 36 meter end I've only got five and I'm only flying five meters above the highest the lowest point then I could get very close to the ground at where if depending on where I took off so um, it's just a rough guide as to uh, where and how you should be flying. Um, distance between lines and footprint, number of strips. Number of strips is just the number of lines back and forward. Number of photos, so pictures, 44 photos would be taken to cover this area. So to give you a visual illustration of the photos it would be taking, you can turn on internals over here will show you where it will try and take a photo of. So basically this is, those 44 photos are these points here. Um, when using it, it's not as exact as this um, because we use uh, DoCam trigger dist. So basically it will use this uh, distance between photos um, to basically take yes. So yeah, distance between lines is 10 metres and currently the, we're 10.58, photos are every 10.58 metres as well. Okay, so um, if I higher, you can see that the photos get less. If I go lower, the photos get less as well. So um, one, sometimes another factor that you may want to do is if there was a lot of wind, you change the direction of the grid. Say, um, say if so, if the wind was coming from the top of the screen here, um, what we might want to do is instead of having to fight the wind, the, to fight the wind, we might want to fly crosswind. So instead of flying it uh, north to south, we could actually fly east to west. Um, there's a few different options depending on where you wanted to actually fly it, and if the wind is playing any part of it. So. Um, yeah, and so we've got, we've already had a look at the distance speed here, so that's fine as well. Um, this next option, add and add takeoff and land waypoints, um, can take off and land at will, and use RTL is an RTL at the end of the mission. So 
normally in Aju Copter, the copter will stop at the last point and just loiter at the last point. So they use RTLs to make sure that it comes home and tries to RTL. So I'll just turn off internals again. So we'll turn off and I'm going to turn on footprints. So this will give us a of where all the photos will be taken and their number of overlaps. So as you can see over here, so we've got a blue dot over here, which what's that? There's going to be two photos covering that where that blue dot is. Uh, that So the cyan dot is three photos. Uh, this purple dot down the bottom is only one photo. So, and the red dots in the center are seven and eight photos. So as you can see, we're getting a lot of coverage in the center square, but towards the not well, maybe we're not actually getting enough cover photo coverage to actually do what we want to do. So one thing you can do is I'm, I'll just turn off the markers again. And you can actually drag the polygon points. So if I go over this, uh, the side edge of the polygon, and I can actually drag this point further out. So because I want a better coverage, I'm going to out here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that on every side just so that I get some nice red dots right into the center as well. So but for photogrammetry, obviously you want a lot of overlap on the area you actually want. So I'm just going to drag this and maybe I'll move that one over there a bit more as well. So maybe, there we go. So now that we've got a lot more photos of the area I actually want, oh, maybe I'll just stick, improve this up as well. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust the angle to better optimize for what we have here. Just so I can, so obviously the angle that you use things as well as to uh, how the lines are currently fit inside the grid. So I'm, I'm probably just going to pick there. So here we're getting uh, six, we're getting six plus photos of this area. So, and we're getting four in that corner. So maybe I'll push that out a bit more, more coverage over this area. So that's, there's looking a lot better. So right up to the edge of the property line, I'm getting six photos, six photos over this other side and the front and back are getting plenty of coverage as well. So that's how you can use the footprints. The footprints are actually based on the camera you pick from the menu. So always make sure you pick the right camera and obviously it's been configured with the right lens as well. So I'll just turn footprints off and turn markers back on so we can see what, what our grid current. So that's looking okay. So now we'll go to the grid options. So the grid options, so what this controls is um, for a copter, it doesn't matter as much, but for a plane, you might need to, because the plane can't turn around on the spot like a quadcopter can, you need, you may need to use overshoot and undershoot. So two values for undershoot and one value for lead in. These numbers actually control uh, how far outside the grid it will fly before it comes back. So if we overshoot and we change this to say 20 meters, you'll notice the points jump. So we've just flown up this line here. Uh, we got and we've basically flying an overshoot to point eight and then we're turning around to come back to nine, 10 and flying back the next line. So that's currently set at 20 meters. Change it to just five meters, which will pull it right back in. And then the overshoot, other overshoot is the other shoot at the other end. So if I change this to 20 meters, you'll notice that it jumps out at the other end. If I change this one as well, now they're both 20 meters. So again, this is primarily used if you were flying in wind um, or if you had some other reason to do so. Uh, zero is a valid value as well for this. So you can leave it at zero if you wanted to. Now, so I've set both the overshoots to zero and now you can see that in is currently set to three meters. And the lead in, you can see how it's actually put a point outside the line. So this, what this, even in copter, sometimes this can help because what it allows it to do is the copter to uh, be pointing the correct direction before it gets to the side of the grid. 
plane, it matters a lot more because quite often after turning with a plane, it might still be banking. So you can control, based on your plane's dynamics, you can control the leader needs to be away for the plane to get back online, given your airframe. So um, yeah, so we can set it at zero or we can set it at something higher. So what I'll do just for this is I'm gonna just stick five meters for them all. Um, just so it's nice and easy, um, just so we've got a little bit of overshoot so we can come back in online and it does everything better too. So now the next thing is start from home. So at the moment, if you have a look at waypoint one is down the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm gonna change the start from to say bottom left. And now you'll notice that the number one is over in the bottom left. Uh, top left, again left, uh, bottom right is the same as home because ho so with home, 